So, I kinda made a Splatoon FNAF fan game, kinda. This was a school project, however, it was a ton of fun and I really wanted to share it with you all. While I can't really release it because Nintendo would send a cease and desist in the form of a pipe bomb. All right, nothing too interesting in the mail department. Oh wait, what's this? At the very least, I can share it here. Also, it's super ironic considering the Bear Bunny Chicken Splat Fest. That obviously wasn't intentional. I've been working on this since the start of my school semester, but it was a funny coincidence. Either way, let's begin. I guess I should start with the obvious. How does one go about combining Splatoon and FNAF? Honestly, Splatoon and FNAF have some similarities off the bat, with both of them having darker lore that needs a little bit of research to fully comprehend. Of course, Splatoon doesn't have nearly as much lore or nearly as much child murder, but you get my point. So I feel this crossover, while still bizarre, isn't as wild as something like, I don't know, Five Nights at Sonic's. Anyone remember those old fan games? Regardless, my initial thought was to try and learn Blender, create some 3D models, then go from there. Um. Hmm. With that, I realized I don't particularly have time to learn Blender and also finish this before its due date, so I opted for the one edit Flumpty's route of embracing a completely 2D style, since it's what I'm used to and would allow me to get assets done a lot faster. With that, all I needed was a premise, and it didn't take long for me to do so. With tech becoming more widely available to the public, a young inventor sees an opportunity not just for innovation, but a quick way to fix their own financial problems. The inventor approaches investors. Robotic idols? These are just prototypes, but just think of the potential. The crowd falls silent, an air of uncertainty filling the room. They wouldn't be replacements or anything. I never think to do anything like that, but they could do things other idols simply couldn't. The investors had their reservations. Robots are expensive and maintenance would be a nightmare. However, they were intrigued nonetheless. But not wanting to take such a huge risk, they broker a deal. The inventor would attempt to bring interest back to one of the investors' dying side projects in order to prove their invention's merits in action. The inventor was given limited funds, the keys to an abandoned diner, and a chance to prove their worth. Hi there. I see you got my own position. I know it's not the best job in the world, but trust me, it's not all that bad. I'm sure you're aware of the robotic idols at this point. It's been all over the news lately. But if you're unaware, our founder created these robots as idol stand-ins. Essentially, if an actual idol is sick or something of the sort, they hire one of our robots to stand in for them temporarily. Actually, this whole diner situation is just a test them out and be able to handle around actual people. Though we've been having problems with them recently, as a hooligan keeps sneaking in late at night and dumping blended ink onto them. Keep having to clean them out in the morning and it's such a pain. Apparently even robots react to that junk. Don't worry though, it should be fine. You might just see them approach the office every so often. Nothing the doors can't handle. But do be careful, the whole building is running off of an ink powered generator. It's for cost reasons. So if it runs out of ink, the whole building will shut down. I'd say the only real cause of concern is Poe. Uh, she's the pink one, and is a bit of a wild card. She kept trying to get into my office when I worked there, constantly hiding behind that middle door. That wouldn't be a problem, but she only ever makes herself known if the door is closed, as she tries to force herself in. I'll keep track of her using the dining room B-cam, or just shut that door every so often to check. It does use power though, so don't keep it shut for too long. And don't ask how that works. I don't know. Alright, I think that's everything. Oh, yeah, and all the idols broke the respawn anchors around the building, so, uh, try not to get flooded. Okay, bye! With that all established, I need to create some designs for these robotic idols. And with designing characters being something I tend to have a lot of fun with, it was no different here. First off is Poe, the namesake of the restaurant and lead vocalist. She is a short-haired inkling and tends to be easily irritated, but sweet to guess. Maybe overly sweet, being almost aggressive in her kindness, which can sometimes scare off guests. Next is Lemma, who is a yellow-haired cuttlefish, which probably doesn't read very well because cuttlefish and inklings have very similar traits, but uh, eh. Lemma is a guitarist and loves attention, always trying to keep eyes on her, which leads to mixed reactions from guests, as some find her overbearing. Lastly is Shy and Fry, a duo consisting of a blue-haired octoling and her small fry friend, who do backup vocals and specialty songs. That being said, Shy is, well, shy. Also, I'm not very creative of names. So much so, she has her own dedicated code. However, she does become more comfortable around guests when she has Fry around. As it may be apparent, all the idols have unique personalities and attributes, which will inevitably play into how they interact with the player in game. In terms of design, I lean more towards the toy animatronics when it came to the idols' looks to make them appear more advanced and friendly. As for their outfits, I went for a more 80s to 90s diner theme. Nothing exactly to that effect, but definitely taking some design cues from those type of outfits. As Splatoon itself tends to take a lot of aesthetic inspiration from those eras. Let's start with The Office, and keep in mind everything is subject to change, so feel free to leave suggestions. The Office itself is pretty cut and dry, two doors on each side alongside some lights, with the doors being themed after Octo expansions. The Office is lined with pipes, as previously mentioned in the phone call, this is to keep the budget low during night shifts, as the building is using a sort of ink-powered generator. 
which we can see when the lights are switched on as glowing ink fills the tanks on each side. Initially this was actually for a scrap mechanic as I really didn't have any idea how to code anything super unique and due to that I have quite a few scrapped ideas which I will be going into later on. Besides that the office is decorated with some Splatoon themed items and two standouts that I want to mention being the Splattershot Jr and the middle door which are also there due to scrap mechanics. That being said the middle door is technically still functional but just not how I originally wanted it. With that let's get into the mechanics. Obviously the tried and true FNAF 1 mechanics are here. Don't use too much power, flip through the cams, check lights, shut doors, etc etc. If you're watching this, then I likely don't need to explain those mechanics all too much. So what about new mechanics? Mind you, I do not know how to code, so a lot of these are scuffed. First off, let's start with that middle door again. The middle door shuts like the side doors, yet takes up two battery bars. Sure, it doesn't make any logical sense, it's not powered by anything instead of being physically shut by the player, but it was the easiest way to prevent the player from just leaving it shut. Or I guess I could have just made it so like if you left it shut it would slowly open like a, a door on like loose hinges or something. I digress. Alongside that you can't check the lights when the door is shut. Forcing you to open the door for a brief moment if you want to check the lights. Or try and check the cams to ensure the other idols aren't at your other doors. The middle door is where Poe attacks. As upon coming in contact with Blended Ink she becomes extremely aggressive. Trying to beeline for the office and hiding behind the middle door waiting for you to lower your guard. With her only becoming visible in the office when the player attempts to shut the door on her as she attempts to barge her way in. Due to this it can be really hard to tell where she is so it's important to keep an eye on her with the camps because if you can't find her there then she just might be waiting behind that door. Moving on to the cams themselves we start with Lemma who when under the effects of blended ink becomes aggressive as expected and more or less does what you'd expect from any FNAF animatronic. Moving from cam to cam with no real unique mechanic to call her own. The most she does is always positioning herself close to the cam due to her want for attention but nothing too crazy beyond that. Shy and Fry however aren't as cut and dry. As Shy starts alone peeking her head out of the employee only door around the main hall which leads to parts and service then directly to her cove. During this period you need a cam staller like Foxy trying to keep an eye on her through cams and as you do it slows her down. This is due to her shyness making her want to avoid being seen. However while in the cove she will begin to reach out for Fry and once she gets him she becomes active making her way to the office as well. Yet with Fry in her hand her confidence is drastically boosted and she becomes the most aggressive idol trying to get rid of your prying eyes. And those are the main mechanics I was able to get working. Besides that it, it plays as you'd imagine. But with the likes of Shy in the middle door it does make for a different FNAF experience. But I wanted so much more. Let's start off with one of the smaller mechanics. The ink tanks on the side of the doors. Instead of just emitting a light as a fun little detail, they were originally going to slowly fill up with ink as the doors were left closed or the lights were used. And once full, the door would then be forced open as the ink tank begins to drain. That being said, it wouldn't need to be fully drained to be shut again. Due to this mechanic, the doors on the sides wouldn't drain as much battery as usual. However, the middle door would still use up two batteries of power for balance reasons. Now for the main mechanic I scrapped, which mind you, I still want in the game yet simply have no idea how to go about doing so. You see, initially I wanted the player to be able to pick up the Splattershot Jr. and ink tank on the desk and then enter the middle door, where you'd be met with a storage room with a drain in the middle, where you'd be able to use audio prompts like FNAF 3 to call in one of the three idols, then use the Splattershot Jr. to clean away the blended ink, returning them to normal and deactivating them for the night. And upon cleaning all three, the night would end early. Essentially it'd be an alternative way to end the night and would allow players to pick their fights, however there is a little bit more to it. First off, if you enter the room when Poe is already hiding behind the door, you die. And once you enter the room every animatronic who isn't called into the room becomes more aggressive. And the fewer idols that are still active the more aggressive the remaining ones become. Meaning if you take too long you might return to an animatronic already in your office. Lastly the actual act of destroying the blended ink would require you to not overdo it as to not actually harm the robots. As when you do you'd also get jump scared. So there would be a lot of risk versus reward and it would require a bit of planning to effectively end the night early without getting jumped. But with all this combined I thought it would make for an extra interesting and fun gameplay loop. That would allow people to take risks and speed up the night to do so or even just play the game like a typical FNAF fan game. As for my last scrapped idea and this one was only scrapped due to time I'm sure many of you noticed that there's only three idols and that's a lower amount of animatronics than the first damn game and I was aware of this but wanted to start with a lower amount due to this being a school project and being worried I might be overdoing it. However I did have an idea for a fourth one and like the Splatterside Jr I left remnants of that idea hiding within the game itself. In the corner of the parts and service cam you can see a broken Poe endoskeleton. Originally on night three or so the phone guy was going to talk about how they reactivated this endoskeleton for testing purposes as they planned to retrofit it aka replacing the outer shell to make it look like a new character a common practice back when animatronic restaurants were more prevalent this would introduce a fourth animatronic being a semi-destroyed poe which would require a puppet-esque mechanic having the player reset an audio track to keep her in the room now it would be a little different than the music box as instead of consistently winding it up you would instead keep an ear out for the music and when it starts to slow down or stop you have a small window to reset it you can reset it at any point during the song but by doing so you can overload the music player and potentially break it. So it's another risk versus reward mechanic. 
Once the player has failed to reset the music proper, the Broken Down Poe becomes active. I had a few ideas on how she would get to the office, but none of them really stuck. First off was the insta-kill, like the actual puppet does, but I kinda hate that type of mechanic as it offers little to no counterplay. So my initial thought after that was adding a vent system like FNAF 3, but then I thought it would simply be too many mechanics at this point and likely be overwhelming to deal with. With that, I had another reason to scrap this animatronic for the time being, at least till I thought of something more unique to justify their inclusion. Though if I continue this project I'd love to add them and even have them get retrofitted in between nights, this way they could become their own unique idol instead of being a Poe reskin. Of course, in my current build, I don't have any of these mechanics. Mechanics. But if I'm able to get someone who's knowledgeable in Koenig FNAF fan games and willing to help, then maybe someday I will. But realistically, this isn't something I can put out there for others to download and play due to Nintendo being Nintendo. At least they make good games. <laughs> <clears throat> With that in mind, these might have to forever stay as nothing more than just some interesting ideas. Regardless, I think that's most of it. I could talk about sound design, but honest to god, I suck at audio stuff, and therefore I've just used a lot of FNAF 1 sounds as placeholders, or just use stuff around my house to make noises, so I don't see it being the most interesting talking point. With that, I hope you all enjoyed this video and my little FNAF Splatoon project, and if you've made it this far, why not do the YouTube thing and like, comment, and subscribe? Either way, I hope to see you all next time. Bye!